Hey mamas, over the next few episodes, I'm going to talk about prayer. Uh, I'm going to pull from my own recent experiences, which have kind of broken the understanding of how I've viewed prayer and how I've approached prayer practically my entire life, ever since I was, you know, a little child going to church. So today, I'm going to challenge the idea of quiet time. I've always associated quiet time with exactly that. It has to be in a very quiet place. You are alone, and it is your moment with God. Now, I'm not diminishing that. I'm not saying that that's bad. But what I've experienced in the past few months in my prayer life is that having silence to begin with is very, very difficult as a mom, but also My mind tends to wander a lot, especially because I'm sitting still as well. So my body starts getting a little restless. My mind's wandering. I have to keep bringing my focus back to my prayer with God. And it's just really, really hard. So if that's you too, I want to tell you where I pray best. And it is so counter to the idea of a structured, quiet time. Three to four days out of the week, I go to the YMCA to a virtual cycling class, which means it is a cycling room with about 15 bikes, but there's this huge screen at the front where they show a video of a lesson. Typically, I'm by myself, but sometimes there's another person, you know, a few people in the room with me. The music is loud. The beats are loud. The instructors are loud. It's very energetic. It's a lot of fun. But during that cycling class, there are periods where you're doing the same movement for 45 seconds at a time or 60 seconds at a time. You know, you're speed racing. You're not having to constantly change the position of your body or change the gear on your bike. And when I get to that part of the class, I've had some of the best conversations with God. I've had some of the most clearest moments with God. I remember one time we had gotten to that portion of the session where we were just speed racing for, I don't know, it was like 45 seconds. And as my body was working hard, my mind started to ask God questions. And this time I remember so clearly it was about my finances I was worried about our budget. I was worried about our finances. What is the future going to hold? Inflation keeps going up. Grocery budgets are high. I mean, I was just really stressed out about that. And I asked God, what are we going to do? I I don't know what to do. And I remember God clearly saying, trust me. Just trust me. You are going to be okay. And this was while the music was loud, the beats were driving. I mean, you couldn't have a conversation with someone next to you because it was so loud in there. But that didn't matter. It kind of felt like all of that was in the background. And it was just me and God in that quote-unquote quiet space. It is tax season now in the U.S. Oh, boy, do I hate tax season. I don't know what we're doing with our W-2s, W-4s. 1099 for, I mean, all of those different forms that I don't quite understand. But we owe something every year. And again, I know there's something we're doing wrong, but getting that bill is awful. And so we went to our tax appointment recently, and I was bracing myself like, oh my gosh, we're going to owe again. And a huge surprise, we actually got a pretty nice return this year. And when I heard that, my mind immediately went back to that moment in the cycling class where it was incredibly loud, but God was louder. And it wasn't that planned, structured, silent time that I've always thought needed to be when I prayed. It was totally opposite of that. I had another one of those clarity moments about this podcast just about a month ago. And as those beats were going on in the cycle class, as, you know, even the singer was belting out lyrics, I asked God, what do I do about this podcast? Do I lay it down? Do I keep going? I just don't know what to do. And again, I heard God speak over those beats. Stay obedient. Keep going. So that's why after about a two-ish month break, I am picking this up again and I'm doing my best to stay obedient to God, 
knowing that it's not the approval of people that I need to seek, but the approval of the Lord. I'm not sure if I would have had those clear conversations with God had I been in a really silent place. And again, I am not at all diminishing or saying that having a true quiet time where it is completely silent is worthless. What I am saying is that that type of environment is not the only way to have a conversation with God. In fact, for me, it's really, really hard, and it always has been, but I've always thought that that is how you need to have your prayer with God. Now, you can always talk to God in little spurts at a time, you know, 10 seconds here, 15 seconds there. I'm actually going to have an episode on that frequency of prayer versus length of prayer because it's another one that I've misunderstood for a long time and has prevented me from having a really fulfilling prayer life. So all that to say, look for other places in your day where you can talk to God. Now know that God is always speaking to you, but are you listening, right? I love, love, love that quote from Tara Banks who wrote the book Waiting on Wonders. She was also on the show last year, so I'll have a link to that in the show notes if you want to take a listen. But look for other places where your mind can be focused on that conversation with God. Maybe it is at the gym where your physical body is totally busy and your mind isn't. The cycling class is the last place I thought I could have a great conversation with God. So take this week to think about your day and just try some things out. All right, Mama, that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's helpful. And I hope you have a beautiful, blessed-filled week. I'll catch you again next time for a cup of coffee with a side of faith wisdom, and hope.